So I am uh, a high school social studies teacher and head boys basketball coach, so I'm going to use my social studies uh, teaching ability. And I'm actually going to start with a video because that's what you were taught as an undergrad when you become a social studies teacher. So I figured that would be the best way for me to start today. When you walk through the doors, Pine City Basketball will be waiting for you. And that's where you'll find out that threes are good company. We like to play together and shoot a lot of threes. The Dragons have earned two reputations. One is one of the most efficient shooting high school teams in the country. We like to take high percentage shots, which include threes and layup. And the other as a system that stymied tradition. Well, I did get an email that told me I was ruining the game of basketball. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to shoot a 15-footer, why not back up a little more and shoot a three? I think other teams would view us pretty crazy. Um, I don't know, I hope they don't like playing against us. <laughs> the method of getting to this point in Pine City is just as mad. All right, you got to work together. Kyle Allen is the 29-year-old head coach controlling this experiment. If we're talking about keeping team chemistry, breaking down basketball to a science. We talk about playing the percentages and everything we do. If you can get the boys to work on three-pointers and practice them and, and shoot them at a decent rate, it's a worth a better percentage because it's worth an extra point. Because numbers don't lie. And this little school, everything is put under the microscope. I don't think I've ever seen that many stats. From height? We don't have any guy over 6'1", six 6'2". Six to hooping savvy, any variable that can be analyzed is. There are binders filled with handwritten notes. Everybody's got a clipboard and they have a job and we have plenty of staff. Same with practice. Managers have clipboards. You know, we slowly added a little more every year. We added the self-evaluation last year um, for the boys. Along with measuring personal progress on paper and during practice. Out of 100 threes each day, um, you, keep, you write how many you make each day. You keep track of how many you shoot. Allen also invested most of his budget into a computer program that tracks every shot in a game. That kind of gives you your hot and cold spots. All in all, there are 100 plus stats being taken, all to collect data for a literal winning formula. Oh, we have this equation he built. It's called the Valley Point System, and it's like rebounds and shots and shots and this. And it gives you a final letter grade for each player and then a final letter grade for the team for each game. It's pretty hard to get an A in the game, but you got to keep working and make those shots. We keep track of talking and practice. We keep track of. Uh, competition. What do all those numbers equate to? It equates to wins and losses, and it equates to probability. And if we can uh, be purposeful in trying to play the side of the positive probability, we feel like we can win more games. This process can be mind-boggling, but from all of the numbers they've gathered, the results and what they put on the court is as easy as it gets. Three's are worth more than twos, you know that. This all may seem like money ball for high school hoops, but the big question is, is it paying off? We, we believe in it, so as long as we believe in it and coach believes in it, I think it's going to work out for us. Makes it. When it does work, it works. Some days the Dragons are on fire from three, but those stats can cool down too. It goes in bunches. You know, you may miss a couple threes, you may miss four or five in a row, and you're thinking, are we doing the right thing? It's all about taking a chance, and that risk is worth the reward to them. When people sometimes look at this and they think that we're trying to say 100% of the time this works, and that's not the case, that's not probability. The probability is that we think we have more than a 50% chance, and that's what we're going to take. We're going to take the majority. The percentages will always even themselves out. And just maybe those shots from distance can help them go the distance. That's our goals every year. We want to put a year on the banner. You know, our goal is to win games. And we go one at a time, and we try to look at the numbers, and we try to let the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, so yeah, a little introduction to Pine City. Um, a lot of what I'm talking about today is very specific to us, because that's what I do, and that's what everything's been tailored for. Uh, the big picture is that uh, we had to win games, uh, and so I inherited a program that was not uh, very successful. Uh, we did not win a lot of games to start. Um, and we had to really find a way to change that. And so we went to the numbers and we started keeping track of more and more information and the information led us to our system that we are in. Um, so it's kind of been a two-way street for us. 
uh, the numbers led us to it, and now everything that we do funnels back to the numbers. So everything that we do is interconnected all the way through. Uh, we also got better at taking team pictures from year one to this year. <laughs> uh, but this is my five and 22 group, uh, and this is my conference championship group. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a nice uh, uh, change as the years have gone on. Um, a little bit on our system, just some background information. Um, on offense, we want to control the pace, play as quick as possible. Um, we have six perimeter spots that we want to control at all times. Uh, and then we also want to control the laner inside five feet. Um, we only shoot open threes and layups. Um, and I say open very uh, <laughs> liberally. <laughs> um, and we do not shoot any other shot besides those. Uh, on defense, which uh, we get a lot of um, media talk from our offensive end of the court, but uh, the defense is really what drives us. Um, on the defensive end, same thing. We want to play as fast as possible and cause as much chaos as possible. Um, we, so to do that, we double at all opportunities. We front the post, we deny the middle, and the basis of our defense is to go play offense. It's not to stop the other team. So it's a little bit of difference in a, in a thought process behind it. But just some background knowledge to put you into why we're doing what we do. Um, so these are our shot charts from this last year for our varsity and our JV. Um, it could improve. Uh, <laughs> But uh, this is kind of what we're going for. Uh, if you, and I probably could have put more years up here and I could put more levels up here. This is what we do in Pine City. Um, uh, our C squad would look very similar. Our junior high would look very similar as well. Um, so we uh, do everything we can to keep those shots uh, within the five foot radius of the hoop uh, and then the three point line as well um, because we're playing the numbers and we're putting a value on each possession, and if each possession is important, the goal should be take uh, the highest percentage of yield of shot that you can take. And so in this case, uh, a layup or a five foot and in, and then a good three point shot would be your uh, highest yielding things. On top of that, with the layups, hand in hand goes uh, the free throw. So those are technically the three shots that we shoot. We just don't shoot the sh jump shot free throw. Um, so yeah, so that's our varsity and JV shot charts um, from this year. But you can see there are outliers. Um, you know, that was a terrible shot even though it went in. Uh, but you can see that not a lot of these are going in uh, and, and none on the varsity uh, went in that were not considered in the area that we uh, want to shoot. Uh, so a big word that we use is purposefulness. And again, just trying to give you background information before I show you some of the stats that we um, take and use. Um, a lot of this came back to transparency, so we were having issues uh, when creating teams uh, at the beginning of the year. And so we kind of started our statistics in almost like a tryout fashion, not to make or not make the team, but to decide what team would be best for your child. Um, and so we kind of started with that. And so we took statistics and stats and we went through different drills and then we keep track of them on a yearly basis. They're allowed to retake said drills. Um, and then that creates our ranking system at the beginning of the year, which then goes into um, trying to create teams. Again, the idea behind it was transparency. We didn't want to hide anything. There was nothing for us to hide from the players. There was nothing for us to hide from the community, the parents, anyone else. We wanted to be upfront with everything that we were doing. So. Um, our prob probably overboard dive into statistics has come back to transparency and just trying to show and give a reason to why we're doing it. Um, my college coach used to yell at us a lot because we always asked why, and instead of giving us an answer, he would yell at us. Our hope is that the statistics answer the question of why. This is why this is happening. So we share this with the players so that they are on the same page uh, as we are, and they are hopefully giving us information that they are seeing as well. Um, we connect everything to our system, so we stick to our principles and our rules, and then everything we do revolves around that. Uh, in the originality of it, the numbers did create the system, and now the system feeds the numbers. Um, so everything is connected with it. Uh, and then one of the best quotes that I found was by Tom Izzo, uh, and he talked about how to teach rebounding and how to drill it, and he said you can't, you just have to give it importance. And so what we decided to do was stat things that were maybe previously unstatted uh, to give them importance, to give them value. If we showed the boys that this was important by putting it to a stat and giving it something of value, then it taught them that that was important. So 
Um, just between me and you in the room, the most important stat in Pine City basketball is 40 rebounds a game. We have never lost a game where we've gotten 40 rebounds. Um, so we put the ultimate uh, price on rebounds in our personal system uh, the way we do it. So um, you want to make sure you track uh, everything. So we <coughs> have transparent to everything. We have goals from third grade through varsity that build off of each other all the way through. We give that to all the players, all the coaches, all the parents um, that build all the way through the system. And then we kind of take team roles to a, to a farther extent. We have mindset roles, substitution roles, and then the next sheet would be um, what the boys call bags, um, which I believe is a video game term uh, where it's basically a skill set that they earn. Um, and they get a sticker that goes on their water bottle, and you would not believe how hard an 18-year-old boy will fight for a sticker. So <laughs> it's a good thing. Uh, but again, it's all laid out in terms of the transparency of our program and then the purposefulness of it, that all of it relates back to what we're trying to achieve. Um, we don't have a mid-range bag in our, in our system. There's no kid that gets that. They kind of want it, but they really don't want it at, at all either. So um, again, just the background behind what I'm kind of talking about to give you where we're going. So it kind of started with practice stats. The first thing we wanted to do was, it, was improve talking. So I'm not a quiet coach. Um, and I don't like quiet gyms. And so we had to find a way to do that. And then we had to emphasize positive talking. So we are lucky enough to have a slew and team of managers that are awesome. And they donate their time to us. And they come into all practices and games and uh, keep track of stats for us and keep track of these kind of things. Um, and so the first big one that we did was talking. And so we give the, the, the managers a definition of what we want and then each manager has their own take on how talking works. So we tell them it has to be, um, it either has to be uh, audibly positive um, or it can be uh, a, a noticeable cheer or it can be an individual conversation. So a kid can go put his arm around a kid. That's a positive interaction kind of thing. Um, I know coaches in the past have uh, measured like touching, like hand touching. Steve Nash was the, was the king of this. Um, so we wanted it to be vocal though. We wanted it to be outwardly expressed. We wanted it to be supportive, positive building. So talking was the first thing that we started to stat um, very heavily and we can now go through a practice or a game and all lulls involve a quiet gym for us. Um, we do not have a lot of lulls when the gym is loud and so um, we now have that. We can look that through in, in a practice as we tape all practices and go through uh, and chart afterwards. Um, and same with games. We teach and practice celebrating. Uh, we teach and practice being positive with our teammates um, because we're putting importance on it, because we are keeping track of it, because there are rewards that come with being a very, uh, we, we call everything top five, so every boy wants to be in the top five, top five talking. Um, this is something that they then do because we put importance on it. Um, we added competition. Um, so competition is any time there's a competition in practice. It could be a one-on-one. -on -one. It could be um, this team versus this team. It, it could be a shooting drill. Uh, everything that we do in practice, we want to be competitive. We don't want to just walk through things and do them to do. Um, we want there to be a winner, and we want there to be non-winners. Um, and so they are competing to be winners. And again, who's the top five competition player of the day? Um, and so we have big boards up in the locker room, uh, and each uh, category that we're keeping track of has its own board. Every boy's name's on it. Every date's going across. After practices, the managers go in. The boys are running the locker room. Who was top five today? It's highlighted. Um, they want to know who was the top five in there. And then the last one, and I told you my secret, rebounding. Uh, we have to rebound. We're not uh, a physically imposing team. Um, and so rebounding is the number one most important stat to our program. And so how do you teach rebounding? Put emphasis on it. When you put emphasis on it, players will respond and do it. So rebounding, these are the big three for us in practice um, that we keep track of on a daily basis. For a rebound to be uh, accepted, it has to be in a competition setting. It's not just a kid rebounding for a kid who's shooting. Um, but most of the time when a kid is shooting, we are making kids compete to get the rebound to pass back to the kid. Um, so again, talking competition rebound is kind of become, that was the beginning. Um, and then we have daily sheets and then we know that Janae and Aaliyah did these ones, and we know that uh, Janae is a little more 
uh, conservative in giving out talking points, and the boys know that when Janae's there, they have to be louder, otherwise she won't give them the points. <laughs> it, was, it was a point of content this year, but we got over it. Uh, we got through it. So, um, and then we keep the binders, and all this information is moved over to the computers, and then we have averages and totals and weekly and so on and so forth. So then the other part of that is nice is that sometimes high school boys uh, struggle with things outside of basketball, I've heard. And so uh, we find a guy in a low week, there might be something else going on. And so it, it has given us the insight into the boys as well. Um, some of you, have you ever heard of Grinnell College in Iowa? So I went to high school with Jack Taylor, who holds the NCAA record for points in a game. He scored 138 points in one game. Um, I went down to visit him before his senior year, and I stayed with him and the coaches for about a week, and, and I wanted to learn their system. And this was just as we were starting to implement a lot of this. And uh, their system is stymily. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's so different that it's uh, hard to take in. And uh, what we tried to do is we tried to take the best parts of it that we really liked, and we tried to implement it into the high school game. Um, and so the threes and the layups was part of it. Um, the numbers coming to simplify the numbers. Um, and the two big ones that we took was you have to have repetition practice in the shots that you want. So we do Grinnell shooting, which is 100 shots a day. Every boy shoots 100 threes a day. Um, we have a big board that goes up, um, and they record their score every day. And then we have weekly top five shooters. Uh, and the reward to be a weekly top five shooter is you get to shoot in a game every time you get a look. Every, you are expected to. Uh, if you do not put that ball up, you will be not happy with what happens. Um, so every boy wants to be a top five shooter because they get to shoot a lot. Um, so there's always competition with that. And then we do a mic in uh, series um, because layups is also a part of what we do. We want to finish around the basket at a high rate. And same thing, we have weekly totals, we have weekly averages, yearly averages. We're watching the SKUs as the, as the year is going on. The SKU should be going up, boys' score should not be going down, so on and so forth. So again, just putting numbers to the things that we deem as important putting it in a public place where the boys can keep track of it, and then we transfer to the computers because that lets us more easily uh, desegregate the data. Again, we can see trends, and that helps us then preparing our, our team for the games that are coming. Um, I took the Danny Miles value point system and I retooled it for our system. Uh, his, system or his system is great. Uh, it just didn't work for what we were trying to do. Um, and so we, we redid it and then we actually redid it again this year. Um, and the goal was, I don't want to throw too much at the boys because then it just becomes white noise. And so we came down to this final number and, and said final number gives them a score individually for the game and then gives the team a score for the game. Um, and it takes into account the amount of minutes they play. Um, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an extended plus minus system, but it's tailored for ours. So, you get a minus two if you miss a two, but you only get a minus one if you miss a three, because we want to encourage them to shoot the three. Um, so things like that, minus two for a free throw, um, plus one for a defensive board, but plus two for an offensive rebound, because an offensive rebound is more uh, uh, valuable in our system than a defensive rebound. Um, so we just kind of took it and revised it to what we wanted to do. Um, I don't know how many boys could tell you what the equation is, but they know which stats are important to them, and they know which ones will help them beat the score. And the best thing I ever had was I had kid, we, we gave it out and the kid said, well, this isn't fair. He's gonna be able to cheat and get a higher score. And I said, isn't that a good thing? Don't we want him to cheat and get a better score? Yes, he's gonna go get 30 rebounds tonight. and It's gonna be great. So they, again, competition between them. But um, so we, we tell them what it is. We tell them what's important. This says what's important to us um, in an equation that hopefully then makes sense to them so that we can then have uh, a more singular uh, information uh, final score for each boy and the team going from game to game. Uh, and then we do in-game stats. And again, we tailor the in-game stats to our system and what we deem is important. So like giving up an offensive rebound, uh, points given up, because we wanted to quantify defense a little better, um, tips, charges taken, which is probably Next to hitting a three is probably the most uh, celebrated activity on the court for us. And then the, the one we added this year was layups attempted versus layups missed. Um, so part of the problem with our system is it feels a little freelance in terms of let's get shots up all the time. And then you forget that you want certain kids to get shots up all the time and certain ones maybe not to as much. So again, the top five. 
So then as we're going through the game, we can look at this and say, you know, this, this player has taken and missed this many layups. Um, the threes we don't worry about as much because they're pretty self-regulatory on that. Um, and then again, trying to put some kind of quantitative to, um, to, the, uh, to the points given up. For this one, it's the same managers for every game because we want it to be uh, exactly similar eyes every day. Um, so these two girls uh, are our in-game stats for the year. So they have gone through with me, they've watched them with me, they've learned how to um, see what I want them to see so that those stats then reflect what we're trying to find. Um, and then we also do play call effectiveness. Um, so we have all of our offensive and defensive sets, calls, plays, presses, out-of-bounds plays, uh, and then we just keep track of the success rate of them as the game goes on, and then we try to do the same thing for the opposing team. Just gives us more insight to the game as we're getting to halftime and trying to figure out um, how we need to maybe reevaluate what we're going to um, attack. Uh, we added self-evaluations, so we ask every boy to evaluate himself on a daily basis. Um, and again, the things that we're asking them to evaluate are not always things that can put numbers to. So like effort, execution, um, talking, we've learned how to put numbers to. Um, and we ask them to explain themselves. We ask them to explain why they're giving them the goal, the score they are, why they're scoring themselves the way um, they are. We then um, have every tape, practice tape so we can watch practice with boys, uh, if need be, that are maybe misevaluating themselves. Um, so that they are on the same page and learning how to do that skill. Um, and again, s same thing, we're asking them to go through um, and evaluate themselves, um, and then the coach also evaluates each one. And the goal is that those numbers are in similar places, but we have 25, 30 kids in the gym, and there's two coaches, and so I'm not able to see player A as much as player A is able to see player A. So his input to him is very important to us, then we give our excuse me. Then we give our input, and so hopefully again that we are on the same page in terms of seeing the same thing from a day-to-day -day basis. Again, transparency, purposefulness, um, saying what's important to us, effort, talking, and execution um, being the big things that we want to see from um, our players moving forward. Uh, and then we've added tons of off-season statistics. Here's some of our big boards uh, that go in the locker room. It's nothing fancy and shiny. Um, it's, we have uh, kids constantly making tag boards of, of grids, and so they just keep going up. Um, and so uh, we have these going up. We have stats that we keep track of in the off season. Um, we keep track of time, number of shots taken, time uh, with the 9450 basketballs, time on the shooting machine, um, time working on X, Y, and Z. Um, we keep track of all our workouts, which I don't think is anything spectacular or new. But again, we put it in there so that they are seeing their growth and change over time, just trying to be purposeful with it. Uh, and then we also do um, two to three interviews with every kid, seven through 12 throughout the year, um, uh, a beginning of the season, midpoint, and end of the season, trying to check in with them, go over the numbers with them. It forces us to slow down and, and take time for each kid um, to make sure that the kid and I are on the same page and we're seeing the same numbers. And, having the same goals, and those goals are aligned with what they want and what they're doing, so on and so forth. And so again, the quantitating of something that maybe didn't, maybe wasn't easy to put numbers to in the beginning. Uh, we're trying to be able to put numbers to everything so that the numbers can explain it in an easier fashion. Questions? Mm -hmm. Yes. Within your division, do you see the same type of defensive formations all the time? No. We see a lot of different. Um, so <laughs> we see just about everything thrown at us. The one that's really gone away is we haven't seen a lot of jump defenses. We don't see as many box and ones and trial gives and twos um, as I think maybe I would think you would maybe see. But we, we see a lot of different zones, a lot of one, three, one, two, three, three, twos. Uh, there was a long time where a lot of teams were running three-two against us to try to get the perimeter, um, and then a lot of a lot of man-to-man. -man. We don't see anything necessarily specific for us. We did see a lot out of three-two for a while. Yes. Does the uh, value point system results that data does that impact your decision making directly on who is playing? Yes. Um, it is not an end-all, be-all nor with anything else. 
um, but it is definitely something that has taken into effect. There's a lot of times that I think um, we as coaches have a lot of things that we're trying to remember, look at, see as a game progresses, as a series of games progresses. This brings you back to your center and reminding you and looking at the game as a whole. It's really easy to remember the kid who went for 40. It's hard to remember the kid that took three charges and got six tips in the game. Um, so it gives uh, us the ability to, to, to see that through the lens of a non-biased factor. So you said you focus on rebounding, which is awesome. I love to see that. But you said you have a lot of short players. So I was curious what techniques you go for to take advantage of those two together, short players, but still getting, yep. getting the board. Uh, man, I'm giving all my secrets away. So we, uh, <laughs> we crash four to the offensive glass on every shot. The only person who gets back is the shooter. If the shooter shoots within the lane, we crash all five. Because an uh, offensive rebound is extremely valuable. So what was the, the shooter gets back? Shooter gets back to defense. If, but if they're in the lane, you say you crash all five? All five. Uh, on defense, we crash all five every time. Um, there is no leaking because we are fast enough to get up the floor without leaking. And if we're not, we're going to get faster. <laughs> Another non-traditional strategy, what are your thoughts on full court press all the time? We full court press all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because we want to control the pace of the game. Yeah. Um, and so part of our theory is that we want to play 10 boys. Uh, and we want you to play 10 boys as well. And so if, if, if your seven take the number of steps of my 10, we are happy. Does it, your model change like two minutes ago up by five or a year, more pace of play? <laughs> no. And here's why. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to stall. My, my players just don't. Um, we don't practice it. Um, I was talking at lunch. Um, we, we, we have the flex installed um, to take time off. Um, we use it as more of like a discipline um, if we're not running our offense correctly to get ourselves back in, in, in the rotation of things. I have seen too many times where a fast-paced team tries to slow it down and it opens the door for the opposing team to come back in. Uh, and so we keep our foot on the pedal all the way to the end. Yes? Do you ever go like five possessions where you missed five threes and you just tell your kids to go to the rim? Yes. Um, I've seen 15 possessions where we've missed 20 threes. Um, it happens. And, and so we talk a lot about things you can control and things you can't control. We, we can't control our shooting percentage. We're going to shoot 22% in a game, which we do sometimes. And then sometimes we're going to shoot 42%, and that's awesome. And that's going to go like this. So what can we control? Our defense and our rebounding. And if we control our defense and our rebounding, that will then even out. What percent of your shots are coming from three, and what per, you know percent of your points are coming from three? I believe last year we shot somewhere between 55 and 60 percent of our shots from the three-point line. We shot over we shot over a thousand the last three years, um, and we are number one, number two, number three in state history and made threes and attempted threes. Um, <laughs> our percentage of points, I'm not, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, we shot 36% from outside this year. Yeah. Any negative reinforcement for the player who pops off and takes a 17-foot jumper? <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I say is that's not what we do. And the second thing I say is it better go in if you're going to shoot it. No one's ever shot it two times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> we better move along. Thank you, Thank you guys.